For all its beauty and splendor, the wilderness can be a cruel teacher. Extreme mountain climbing, also known as alpinism, is a type of mountaineering that involves ascending steep and dangerous mountains using specialized equipment and techniques. It is considered one of the most challenging and physically demanding sports in the world. Despite the risks involved, extreme mountain climbing continues to attract many adventurers and mountaineers who seek the challenge of pushing their physical and mental limits to new heights. The Himalayas are a mountain range in Asia that stretches over 1,500 miles across several countries, including Nepal, Bhutan, India, Pakistan, China, and Afghanistan. The range includes some of the highest peaks in the world, including Mount Everest, which is the highest at 29,029 feet above sea level. The Himalayas are characterized by their jagged peaks, deep valleys, and steep slopes. Having the highest peaks in the world, the Himalayas is the mecca for mountain climbing. The height and challenging terrain of this region present a significant challenge for mountaineers, making it an attractive destination for climbers seeking to test their skills and endurance. The Annapurna Massif is a mountain range located in the Himalayas in north-central Nepal. It is composed of several peaks, with the highest being Annapurna I, which stands at 26,545 feet and is the 10th highest mountain in the world. The Annapurna Massif is known for its challenging climbs and dangerous conditions, with Annapurna I being considered one of the most difficult and deadly mountains to climb. Despite the allure of the Himalayas, climbing in the region remains a dangerous undertaking, with harsh weather, unpredictable terrain, and the risk of altitude sickness all posing significant challenges. For Pierre Begin and Jean-Christophe Lafay, their attempt to summit Annapurna Perds would be a disaster that would live in infamy. Pierre Begin and Jean-Christophe Lafay were two of the most skilled mountaineers in the world. They had both summited some of the highest peaks on the planet and were known for their incredible bravery and determination. A climber from the age of seven, Lafay was initially a sport climbing ace fully involved in the competition circuit in the late 1980s and early 1990s. He began to make a name for himself in the climbing community, completing several difficult routes in the Alps and beyond. At 41, Pierre Begin was a household name in France and in international mountaineering circles. He was universally recognized as one of the world's most brilliant Himalayan climbers. In the spring of 1992, French mountaineers Jean-Christophe and Pierre set out to climb Annapurna Juan, one of the deadliest peaks in the Himalayas. Lafayla was just 27 years old at the time, but he was already a seasoned climber with several major summits to his name. He wasn't as seasoned in the Himalayas as Beguin, but he saw his potential and, with Jean-Christophe's technical brilliance, believed he would be an excellent partner for this ascent. Lafayla was an ace. However, Annapurna would prove to be his greatest challenge yet. The expedition began in early March when Lafayette, Beguin, and their team arrived at the base of the mountain. Annapurna is over 26,000 feet tall, and its slopes are notoriously treacherous. The team spent several weeks acclimatizing to the altitude and preparing for the climb. Pierre and Jean-Christophe hoped to climb a new route on the nearly two-mile-high south face of Annapurna. Finally, on March 22nd, Lafayette and Begin set out for the summit. They climbed steadily, navigating steep, icy terrain and braving brutal winds. The climb started off well. Begin and Lafayette were making good progress up the mountain, and they were able to avoid many of the treacherous crevasses and ice falls that plague Annapurna. However, as they neared the summit, the weather began to deteriorate rapidly. Winds picked up, and the temperature dropped drastically. The climbers were forced to take shelter in the small bivouac tent, huddled together to stay warm. But as the hours passed, the storm grew more intense, and it became clear that they would have to wait it out. Days went by, and still the storm raged on. The climbers were running low on supplies, 
and the cold was starting to take its toll on them. They huddled together in the tiny tent, trying to stay warm and conserve what little food and water they had left. As the days turned into weeks, it became clear that Bacon and Lafayette were in serious trouble. They were running out of rations, and the storm showed no signs of letting up. The two climbers were forced to make a difficult decision. They would have to try to make their way back down the mountain, despite the dangerous conditions. They started their descent, but the weather was still terrible. The wind was howling, and the snow was coming down in thick, blinding sheets. Bagan and Lafayette struggled to make their way down the mountain, using all of their skill and experience to avoid the dangerous crevasses and icy terrain. This is when disaster struck. As they were descending, the single cam Bagan was using as an anchor became dislodged. Bagan fell into the void. Lafay knew immediately he was gone. Suddenly, a sharp sound like a whiplash grazes my ears. The mooring has just come loose. I see Pierre slip and disappear. I start screaming with all my being. Pierre! Pierre! Lafayette said. Jean-Christophe looked in horror as his partner plunged down one of the largest mountain faces on Earth. It is not possible to live if you fall on this face, he said. Bagan fell at least 6,000 feet down the face. His body was never recovered, but it is thought to be somewhere amongst the crevasses and deep snow of the glacier at the bottom of Annapurna 1. Lafayette was alone at about 23,000 feet, more than 6,000 feet above the advanced base camp. Bagan had been carrying most of the pair's technical equipment, including all the ropes. Too shaken to move at first, Lafayette eventually began to solo down mixed terrain. He eventually made it to a bivy site set up on the ascent and stayed there all the next day while the storm assaulted the rock face. There was scarcely enough space in which to sit on an ice-covered rock, and he had to wear his helmet all the time because of falling stones. Then, when it couldn't have gotten any worse, a falling rock struck his right forearm and broke it in two places. At this point, Jean-Christophe Lafay was in a dire situation. His climbing partner was dead. He had a broken arm, and he had very limited gear and had to descend the most dangerous mountain in the world, or he would perish as well. John Kristoff knew what he had to do. He had to make it to their advanced base camp, where more gear would be, and the descent would be much easier for a climber of his skill. So, in the face of certain death, Lafayette made the decision to descend or die trying. He decided to start the descent at night to expose himself as little as possible to more falling stones. He only had 20 meters of six millimeter cord they'd left at the bivy site, along with a single sling and two carabiners for gear. He used tent poles for rappel anchors, using his good hand and his teeth to rig the rappels. He started descending. When it became too difficult to pull the ropes, he abandoned them and continued down climbing. By some miracle, Jean-Christophe Lafay reached the advanced base camp. He now had plenty of rope, and survival was likely. He found that their tent had been crushed by the recent heavy snowfall, so this wasn't a safe haven. He had to keep moving, going down and across the difficult glacial terrain in bad snow conditions. He wearily managed, on the afternoon of the 15th, to get himself to the base camp of a Slovain expedition. Luckily, a doctor was with the expedition and gave him a shot of morphine and put his arm in a splint. The climb was a redemption for Lafelle, and a tribute to his lost friend and climbing partner, Pierre Begin. I don't know why I wanted to climb Annapurna, Lafelle said. Perhaps it is because it is the most dangerous, and I wanted to face my fear. Or maybe because of Pierre. I am sure he is still on the mountain. 